you know, it's 105. Uh, you know, just 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 to give some quick disclaimers at the top of the hour. Uh, I think this thing goes for an hour, correct? I, th I think it does. Um, so for for all that you guys are here, I was very uh, a little bit like, oh man, all space VR, I, I, all sorts of technical problems could could arise, and I don't like those things. So I ended up pre-recording this video. Uh, so I'm gonna you know be here, and I gave it like I was live, and I'm gonna stay here, and I'll I'll, I'll try to move my avatar so it looks like I'm moving, <laughs> but I will stick around for Q &A and A uh, and 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 answer questions and. I suppose let's just start off. Let's it's 106. Let's I always like to give people at least 10 minutes of 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 lead time because you know we don't have a lot of people here. So if anybody you know Actually, has any questions or anything they're hoping to get out of this this talk, I'm kind of interested to know why you showed up, why you're here. You know, um, yeah, you know, let's just talk and give everybody time to funnel in and we'll start in four minutes. So uh, anybody want to bring up something? Can I hear people? I don't even know if I can hear people. I think it's a, a little hard to hear people uh, beforehand. We have to we have to kind of handle oh, it. Oh, all that stuff. All right, all right, all right, all right. We actually, all right. We, we've been starting all the talks about five minutes after. So I okay. Kind of all right. Let's just do it. Let's just jump in right into it. So anyway, okay. you guys. Uh, so Josh, you know, let's start this, baby. If you want to hit play, I'll mute my mic, and then we'll do. Oh, they see people. Hi, people. People are coming in. Welcome, welcome. Oh, look at those hands coming up. Sweet. Uh, so Josh, you start it, and you guys, uh, I will Welcome be here for to today. my XR Safety Talk uh, for XR Safety Week. Uh, my name is Future Meme. Uh, that's my artist name. You can call me Nick. Uh, you know, I just I'm living in the metaverse, and uh, everybody's got a handle. So call me Future Meme, and I, you know, I'm going to show you guys some of the artwork that I create. I, I draw possible futures of technology and humanity and specifically this talk is going to be focused on education really in the mirror world so you know this is what i do i kind of sit down with my pen and paper and look at this 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 mirror world which is really the metaverse you know metaverse mirror world spatial web whatever you want to call it you know it's it's what i like to think about and and i i sit there and, and visualize what you know the planet is going to be like in, 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 you know, five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, I don't know. It's just what I do. <laughs> and there's me drawing it. So who am I and, uh, and everything? Well, um, you know, I was an eighties kid. I, I grew up on, on, and seventies kid. I grew up on Sesame street and, and loved the, the TV. This is me in the 1980s, uh, watching a cookie monster. Uh, and I don't know, that really informed me. And uh, I, I, my dad was a writer and I always knew I was going to be an artist. And uh, here's me at 11 and I was drawing, um, you know, political cartoons for the, the paper. I was a very precocious kid. Uh, you know, I look very cute there and uh, I was adorable. Uh, and I don't know, these are like, you can see like there's Jesse Jackson there. And I had like, you know, Dukakis and all these <laughs> things i think my dad would watch mcneil era news hour and i just kind of absorb it and be like what's going on he'd be like kind of summarize it for me uh but there's me as a cute kid uh now i'm old and scraggly and also a little fat with a double chin uh and and you know i i, I did a, my first real love uh, you know i did cartoons but then i quickly went in technology because i realized that art was really hard to do something new like everybody draws vases with flowers and sunsets and i was like Oh, video games is something new. So I uh, went to video games, and here's uh, the first video game that I released in like 1997. I was art director on it, and uh, that's actually my face. You can kind of see a little similarities in there, and that was the box art for it called Dead Reckoning. So I got into video games and did that for a bit, but then the web was happening, uh, and so I did the. I got into the web. And uh, I, I created what was really the first free high-res texture site on the on the internet. It became popular. People wanted to 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 upload their own textures and 3D models to it. And so then I helped with the help of a lot of other people, co-founded TurboSquid, uh, which was really the first digital creator economy on the internet because it happened in 1999, 2000. And when I really look back at it, it was really 
the first one that said, oh, digital assets, they're a thing. You can buy and sell them and give them away for free. And so, you know, Turbo Squid now, you know, movies and games and everybody on the, on the earth now uses Turbo Squid to, 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 to buy uh, 3D models and, 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 uh, and, and give away their 3D models for free. And uh, you see them in games and, and all sorts of stuff. I did Turbo Squid for a little bit until it got too boring and <laughs> too much of a corporate thing for me, which I never really liked. And and uh, so I went back to uh, to games. I worked on True Crime Streets of LA, Shrek 2. Uh, True Crime Streets of LA was really the first Mirror World. It was an actual video game that uh, using GPS data that mirrored actually LA. Uh, and then I found out that got too corporate for me. <laughs> And uh, I went to the Art Institute of Los Angeles and uh, went there and helped kind of found uh, the, the their Bachelors of Science in Game Art and Design and Game Programming and taught there for, I don't know, 12 years uh, is probably my happiest time in my life, just hanging out and, and teaching people how to make video games. And my students work on every game from League of Legends to God of War. To, I don't even know where they went because I literally taught thousands of them and they're all over the industry at this point so i love that but then again that turned very corporate to me and vampiric like i don't know the kids start the, my students were just paying so much money for tuition and thankfully that place is out of business now so um that happened and then i was like oh screw that i'm gonna start my own schools i started uh i, I co-founded co co uh with a friend uh, uh ucode um the and he did start at first though i will always want to give scott there but i came in at the beginning and 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 said let's teach minecraft <laughs> and all sorts of fun stuff and uh, and and from there i went on to my own company which I, I i found with a few friends and we have game gen now where we teach kids teens and adults in the spectrum uh uh how to make video games and then uh which is you know, it's amazing. We teach so many of these adults who love video games um, how to actually take their love and turn it into uh, teach them the tools for how to create their own as a self-expression. And it's it feeds the soul. It feeds the soul. Um, so those that's my main thing that I do. And then, oh, I, I put this in here because uh, this is an NFT that I minted. And uh, I, I, I actually minted this NFT in 2018. And uh, yeah, yeah, before the whole NFT craze. I did this in 2018. I think it might be the first mention of Metaverse. Uh, I think it could be the first NFT which actually mentions Metaverse. And I actually donated to Kavya one of these NFTs uh, that she can, you know, take those funds and use them any way she sees fit to, to fund her amazing organization. And, and I just want to also thank XR, our XRSSI for... Uh, or SI for letting me speak today. Uh, but this, I think it's the first NFT with the word metaverse in it. And I kind of in it predict that the metaverse will use crypto goods and digital scarcity is embraced. And that's pretty cool, right? Uh, that I minted that in the blockchain and, and have that prediction before it actually hit. Well, let's look at some other stuff that I'm about to mint. Uh, oh, shoot. I have my super reality trio. So this is what I'm doing now and what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, so super reality is, is, is my nonprofit that I'm starting with a bunch of friends and we're all open source. We're all, um, uh, you know, what's the best way? Uh, open source nonprofit. You we're trying to be on the right side of history, the side of good. Uh, you know, I, I would love people in 50 to hundred years, look back on what I'm doing now and be like, Oh, he wasn't a dick. <laughs> that's all I'm, that's all I'm hoping for at this point in, in, in the game. Um, so, so super reality, you know, I can, I can quickly scrub through the trailer. I'm not going to make you guys watch it. I was going to have that. Oh my goodness. We have to watch ads. This is my other account. It's, it's not enabled for this stuff. Okay. Let's get in there. Ah, oh, so Kurgsad actually did this thing. Uh, and, and what you're seeing here, uh, Kur, 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 oh, I'm going to, I'm going to mess up there. Kurgsad. Uh, they're uh, the German company that does all those amazing YouTube videos that really teach, uh, man, they have everything from pollution to health, to biology, to the, you know, they can make like, like entropy death sound cool. <laughs> These guys are really, really good. So I splurged on a video that, uh, you know, kind of takes all my drawings and ideas and, and summarizes them better than I could. And so we'll have a link to this trailer. You guys can find it on superreality.com. 
And what I basically go over is, is, is what education in the metaverse looks like, where you're able to be in the metaverse and to look at these clouds and see these, these sunflowers and play with these systems of reality and learn from them. But I also go into AR and talk about these new you know, spatial computing glasses that are coming and this, this whole intelligence layer that's going to be on top of reality soon. You know, it's this idea that that you'll be able to look at a dog and see its actual bones. And and then we get into these other thoughts I, I have for what we want Super Rally to be is this decentralized classroom where, in fact, uh, the teachers are part of the teachers, which support teachers and collaborate with teachers, are these AIs. And, and we think that there's going to be AIs in everything. Uh, sunflowers, you know. Uh, any aspect of society will have it. You know, AIs really have been stuck in these boxes, you know, and they're not really embodied. But what we're trying to do is really embody these AIs. And you can see Gaia there is kind of hanging out and talking. We even think we can make an AI for the Earth, you know. Uh, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's this different form of education that leveraging AIs as teachers, right? Whether it's a sunflower or having an AI chat bot that represents a bee, the idea is that you should be able to go up and talk to these things and just get this information from them. And even yourself, uh, that's that's a line from the trailer, will have a digital twin. And so this is you yourself. And I, I don't know, I'm going to stop with the trailer because you guys can watch it. And they did a much better job than me uh, of it all. Let's get to the artwork because we have a limited amount of time here. Uh, but we have so much cool stuff. Teachers are going to have digital twins of the self. You'll have digital twins of historical figures you're going to have you know everything and 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 here's what what i'm actually working on with a with a bunch of uh of, of of rebel alliance people trying to change education for the good of humanity is uh you know we're, we're going together and trying to build these these consensus based ais so anyway i'm going to shut up on this and let's get back to the slideshow because uh you know you guys can watch that anytime uh but i suppose a director commentary is a good idea uh so anyway let's go to the next bit so let's get into my drawings right and this will hopefully give you an idea of what's coming and what safety measures might need to be in place so i'm going to first show you all the the cool stuff right like just you guys are your heads are going to be swimming by the time uh we get done with this thing is like what are the cool things that are coming down the pike and so for one i'm dropping this as an nft this kind of the album is going to be called reverse engineer this where i have all these ideas and and uh just give them away for free i i i really you know <laughs> give zero fucks about that stuff at this point in time it's like these ideas really should be for everybody and and so i i have no interest in patenting things or 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 doing anything other than forwarding humanity along in the best uh, possible ways and so i call a verse engineer this because you know i know i created turbo squid i know how all these guys are thinking and uh you know i think it's 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 better if these ideas are out in the ethosphere and for the whole world to kind of pile in and, and make the least fucked version of it so um, what is the mirror world? What is the metaverse? Well, this kind of summarizes us. We're all these physically based carbon based entities, but what we're really doing is we're taking our digital selves, our digitally even embodied consciousness as an AI and as an avatar ourselves and going into this place. And it's going to be cool, man. It's going to be super cool. I mean, you know, there's multiple threads here that you can think about is these, the from birth and AI collaborates in XR. So here's this idea that you have this personal AI that kind of is, is you in a sense, it's your embodiment of your, your data. And, and, and it's this interesting thing that I think you'll be able to talk to it and play with it. And you can see it's, it's, it's building with you. It's holding you and, and kind of, as you get older, even helping you translate the world and understand these very complicated things. So I think a big part of your learning will be these digital twins that actually, you know, work with you to your benefit. Um, it, it, it's weird too here. You know, it's this idea that this AI is coming and well, where does it stop? Well, I don't like to think of these ideas of Siri and Google and these giant megalithic AIs. Like those feel like the, the bad guy in the end of Tron, right? That big spinning red head. I like to think of these individual AIs as, as being these kind of representatives for that kind of consciousness stream. And, you know, it's a weird world we're going to where you can have these biometric sensors 
feeding into this these plants and actually you know telling you how these plants feel and and actually having their their signals translated in to words that we can understand and it's like oh okay you want me to water you i can do that um and this translation doesn't stop so i i know a, a group of guys that actually are proving this out with gpt3 now i drawn this in 2019 as he pointed out yes these ideas have been around for a while <laughs> <laughs> I make no, no I'm not saying I'm always original there, uh, Sean. Just letting you know, uh, it's 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 me just trying to make sense of how these puzzle pieces work, so I can then build on top of them. And one of them is these AIs using GPT threes will uh, will adapt, right? Like, so this kid wants math and two plus two, right? But this kid needs it in shapes. You know, I'm kind of like this kid. I, I'm this kid. Um, uh, you know, so it adapts to each individual. You know, uh, I think you'll have even speaking amongst people and different cultures, you'll have translators that not only translate the words, but they also translate the lexicon for people. So, you know, if a quantum physicist who can't really understand how to dumb their 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 lexicon down for an eight year old, uh, you, you know, how do you do that? Well, I think an AI could do that really good, especially if the AI is a personal AI that understands all that that kid knows and um you know knows his lexicon and when they're speaking it's translating uh between them so the kid can actually be like oh really that's how the double slit experiment works it's like yeah, yeah buddy that's how it works it's like oh wow you know uh because i struggle with how to explain that to my daughters or even make it relevant to them um so what else is going to happen oh man that classroom is going to get bomb yo um using uh, you know she's got these xr glasses on he's got a a, a a a phone they're seeing the same spatial reality and in this spatial reality for this moment in time they're actually learning in first grade about the ocean and to learn in in about the ocean is to be submerged in this digital ocean i just think that's going to be so cool so we're really getting freed up from not having to like uh be in these books but man now we're able to explore these worlds together like multiplayer learning in the real world so a lot of the stuff i don't draw vr for i'm more interested in in, in what spatial computing is really going to do for reality and so when i draw these things these dot 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 dots are my language to kind of communicate to myself that those are not really there those are holograms and 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 only in these glasses uh that that, that they're seeing can they see these things uh, but in the spatial reality, you know, for teachers and everybody else will will help you operationalize uh, what you're doing. I mean, you're going to be able to to see students' names over their heads. You know, you'll have spa spatial, um, uh, spatial uh, you know, blueprints for how to build this stuff. Like these kids are trying to build these uh, this blocks and they've got this cool hanging like little blueprint in front of them or probably overlaid on top of it. Um, I think because we'll have this telepresence, right? We'll be able to have these students from all over the world. You know, here's a kid from America hanging with a kid in China, hanging with a kid in, oh man, I forgot what flag that is. <laughs> That's a flag. Sorry, whoever flag that is. I'm, I'm, I'm not the brightest bulb in the tree. But they're hanging out together and having a grand old time because they care about the same stuff and are learning together and are learning, you know, these things together. And, and I think that's where peace happens, honestly. Like if I was to give my theory on how we make peace happen, oh, it's not the adults. Those, we're all messes. We got all that baggage. Kids, oh, oh, they're cool, man. Let's just throw our kids together. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're cool now. Uh, and they'll grow up cool. So, you know, and here's another thing too about it is like, here's this student and she's going to school with like, this international student and she's looking at him and it's translating his language into a language she can understand. So this real time Star Trek translator, oh man, that's happening. And having that in schools with kids from different cultures, oh, so cool. So again, you know, operationalizing the classroom, whether it's like understanding that this kid just got something right and a plus one popping up, understanding what this kid is, is doing. Like a teacher can just look out over the room that she is like stewarding and be able to see like, oh, they're, they're on task. Oh no, what's going on here? Like, 
little Jimmy over here has a head cold, and we can understand that maybe as a teacher I should go give him some health because he doesn't look as happy as these other kids. You know, and it's this idea that these kids uh, can just, you know, he's like, put put the glasses on. We need help as these kids, kidpreneurs, whatever you're going to call them. Uh, I was walking in a park uh, this weekend, and some parent was talking about that. And it's this idea that the kids themselves can be these entrepreneurs and i think i have a drawing that i need to put out about it but it's this idea that age and race and everything is is just going to go out the window and and it's it's just about intellect and so allowing these kids to kind of build their inventions and get help with them from adults that sounds cool um you know they're building like a solar array here and they're powering this light bulb but for them they actually see that it's a rocket and think it's just super cool Um, And it's just going to be this beautiful reality where, you know, nature can sing to you and its vibrations are are, are talking and it's like, oh man, I I like that. Um, And then, you know, this is something that I doodled up just a couple weeks ago. We're talking about what do these AIs look like in museums and, and, you know, here's the Atari and, you know, Atari and every one of these video games has these amazing creators that actually made these things, right? And they have their stories about how they created it. They have these ideas. And so having these AIs, which embody these creators, so kids can ask questions to them, that sounds like a cool idea. Let's do that, you know? Um, and and then keeping track of what kids know. I mean, this is, I debate about whether to put this one in here, because I don't think this, you know, gives the concept away, but, you know, just knowing, hey, this kid, has passed the driving test (laughs) and the guy's saying, yeah, yeah, come on there. And there's this proof of learning that I think the blockchain will really bring into reality that, that these kids can just, and and adults, it's like, Oh, are you qualified to run that machine? Oh yeah, yeah, you're qualified. Sweet. Is, is making sure that trust and transparency and proof of learning tokenized knowledge uh, is something that I think will, will happen. Um, and, you know, there's all sort more trust. It's like, oh, man, this they trust each other. There's nutrition. There's 90% of this. There's confidence. So I put confidence values in everything because, again, am I 100% sure that any of these futures will happen? No, I just have a certain slider of confidence values, much how artificial intelligence thinks. And so there's these confident values. This is 90% nutritious for you, you know. Um, and, again, these teachers and these AIs, I think, will will – understand how much you should be eating and and be like hey, here's the optimal thing and highlighting what you should actually eat because this student needs vitamin d i i i drew this before COVID. i know vitamin d is now really good to have but uh but there you go um and you know i think there's these these other things of you know i have daughters i have i i i have, I have my you know, I don't won't won't get into it so much, but my daughter's 14 and she's a beautiful person, but she's struggling to become an adult like we all did. And she goes through rough times. And 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 I think this idea that they can just, you know, allowing these students to safely be able to tag their feelings and emotions and and for parents to know that that we can help them, I think, is a thing. Uh, I think that's a big thing, honestly, is is there's there's so much especially with COVID, is is just understanding who needs help, I think, is a big one. Um, Back on the upswing. All right. Uh, You know, know, right now we're going through this giant democratization in in software development. I mean, uh, OpenAI's codex shows us all that that now we can just speak code into existence. It translates from like, hey, make the ball bounce on the screen to actually JavaScript, right? And so understanding that kids will be authoring artificial intelligence in first grade in kindergarten <laughs> is the way we're going. That's just how it's going to be. It's going to be so easy. And you can see that she's kind of imbuing these puppies with AI and saying, oh, you're more shy, little guy. Um, yeah. And then, you know, these personal AIs, I feel, will will just keep on helping us. They'll point to to things that we might be interested in like that's the ryan's belt this kid loves astronomy and it's showing him that to uh helping us do stuff that is beyond us like you know i've seen these these computer vision ais and 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 you know it it looks at this stack of bricks and it's like 852 instantly 
you know, and uh, as a human, I don't want to count that stuff. You know, I'm always paranoid. Did I skip over a number and am I really getting it? And those are tasks that we can offload to these AIs and especially our personal AI. And then this is a big vision for super reality is these portals into the classrooms in, in real space, right? It's this idea that when I'm walking around uh, the, the real world, the real world is going to become this video game like experience that, you know, uh, anywhere I look, I can see if people from around the world are learning about this sunflower and be like, oh, let me just join in and warp into that discussion and go into that, that metaverse. And that I think where we start connecting people based on their learning interests and love for what you know, is nature around them and getting those people that love those same things together. Because maybe there's only 10 people on earth that are cared about sunflowers, right? But it's cool if you put those 10 people on earth to care about sunflowers together. They might come up with something cool and new to do with sunflower seeds. I don't know. Um, so I do think there's going to be portals to classrooms everywhere. Um, and I think there'll be help everywhere. You know, I think this this idea that that you know, we're going to have these spatial support systems. So when a class wants to plant a garden, you know, or the parents can know and some, uh, you know, engineering dad can come in and be like, oh, we should make this and put this here. And, and, and some mom is, I can dig and I can water and just trying to let us all work together. I think those types of interactions will become frictionless for ourselves. And then again, I, I, I do think that there'll be a, uh, for education, right? Just like we're translating and, and I think there's, there's an equality when that translation really, really works. And at Game Gen, we teach adults on the spectrum, right? Um, I feel like, 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 like the neurodiverse creators will, are definitely going to be way more taken care of than they've ever been in the history of the world coming up here. I think the AI is really the advocate that they've been looking for um, for a long time because where other people get, you know, uh, tired and need respite and all those things, uh, AI doesn't get tired. And then done the right way, it'll be amazing. You know, and yeah, I love this idea of these these teachers, right? These idea that, that you can go out in reality and actually talk to a tree. You know, I think that's a cool thing. At, at Super Real, we actually have a, a tree AI that, you know, I was talking to it and like, how you doing, Miss Tree? It's like, I'm doing cool. And uh, and and I asked about its 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 apples. It's like, hey, watch out for those apples. It's like, really? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'm like, why? It's like, well, my seeds are actually poisonous. They're filled with strychnine. And I never knew that, right? And so, you know, this AI taught me that. Now I know that. And that's this kind of thing of, of this instead of going in books and having these monologues, I think all learning will become a conversation. And I think people learn better that way. I think people retain things better that way in conversations. Um, they, their interest stays engaged with conversations. Uh, much like you guys' interest is waning here. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we got a lot to get through here. So take a deep breath, we'll, 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 get, we'll be through this soon. Uh, what else we get? Yeah, you'll have special guest speakers like digital representatives of the past, like Carl Sagan. It's like, that sounds cool. Like, why don't we have Carl Sagan actually be a guest speaker? All these data sets that these AIs represented, right? I feel, or they, we've proved it, you can put them together and say, hey, you're Carl Sagan. It's like, yeah, hey, I'm Carl Sagan. And that's such a cool way to learn, right? Is Is to learn astronomy from someone who loved astronomy and and there's all sorts of questions so about and concerns about this stuff it's like oh how do we do this in a non-fucked way it's like i don't know let's figure this thing out together and and uh, we'll get into that later but you know i got a friend talking about parks with me and it's this idea that you can go into a park it's a park in tucson and 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 have the land actually teach you the history about these AIs that are trained from indigenous people to really give you, hey, this is what this was, this land that you're on. I think all land will have this temporal history to it. So super reality, what is super real? That's what, what, what I'm working on. And a lot of these things, maybe they'll make it into super real, maybe they'll make it into other uh, features. You know, I just really care about the open metaverse. Like I just care that these realities happen 
right? And they happen in the best possible ways. And uh, I, I think that, that, that how do we get there? That's how, what I always ask myself. And so what are the systems we need in place to make these things happen? Like I gave you guys a glimpse into the, the cool features and some of you guys are like, wait, wait, what's going on? That's happening? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's happening, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> Whether I do it or not, somebody else is going to do these things. It's just reality is about to become this big video game with spatial computing. Well, you know, in the mirror world, it's like, okay, well, here's what you can do with video games. So anyway, um, here's practical things that we're going to need to lock down, right? Or, or these are my suggestions. Cool. Mirror world. For it to be that Goonies style adventure, right? For learning to be that Goonies style adventure, um, you know, I mean, when I was a kid, my dad let me go everywhere in reality. I could adventure all around this town I lived in called Redlands. I, I, I was 10 years old. I literally had 15 square miles that I could go in. And I went to everything. I went into every shop, talked to every shopkeeper. I adventured around the whole place, right? Um, my wife doesn't let my kids go to the park without her, her. It's like we, and many of you feel that same way. Reality's gotten weird and scary and that sucks. What is that doing to us as a society and a culture? How do we get out of this tailspin we're in? Okay, well, here's some things. Um, I think with these new headsets, you're also gonna get biosignals, right? And I think those biosignals should go to your child or from your child should go to the parents. And so if ever your child feels fear or there's some pain threshold going on, instantly the parent can be there with telepresence and help the child navigate that, that, that situation. Um, you know, whether they scrape their, their shin and, and the parent has to like get there and help them or there's some weird situation the kid is really not interpreting right, right? Um, having what spatial computing really means is not like in Star Trek where you're actually sending your atomic structure over, but you will have that instantaneous level to where you can be where your child's at instantly and look through their eyes and in the environment like you're there and, and, and understand, be able to communicate with them. And I think that is going to put a lot of parents' fears at ease, right? And so with that being said, what else do you need? Well, you need markers where the kid can go that's safe. You need geofences that tell the kid where they shouldn't walk. Like, don't go on the football field. They're playing football there. You're going to get hit in the head, you know. Um, you're going to get information from the world, just like that sunflower I was talking about. And I'll tell this story real quick. Um, is, is, you know, plants and everything can educate you about itself, but they can also tell you when they're dangerous. Like my daughter... Uh, ate a castor bean plant when she was like five and she it was in our yard castor bean is actually ricin <laughs> yeah walter white ricin that he killed the jesse's girlfriend with and uh he, she was in the er for 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 five days her organs were shutting down right and so it's like i don't know it would have been good if somebody told us that those plants were poison we wouldn't have let the kids play with them for a month like we did but nobody knows you know, in reality, there's these dangers all around us. And how do we communicate those things? Well, you know, we just have the thing itself tell you how it works and what to do and what not to do and make that transparent and consensus-based. And who knows? We'll be good. Um, you know, so there's trusted friends. There's like, hey, these people we go to school with. You can talk to these people. Um, I think school will still be a place to hang out with. And, you know... Uh, there you go. You have these guardian AIs, which are watching out for your kids, I feel. So all sorts of cool stuff. Okay. So how do we get to these things without them being completely 1984 Orwellian? That's a good question. I ask myself that question every day because we're in that reality right now. You start thinking about Tristan Harris and 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 what he's saying and this uh, you know his wonderful movie there and 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 the social dilemma and then you know we think about the stuff daniel schmachtenberg saying and it's like oh man spidey sense is off the charts right um i think this is a step in the right direction i know we can't make this step now i showed this to a friend today and he was like well that can't happen i'm like well i know it can't happen now but i'm pretty sure in 20 or 30 years, this is what the consciousness level is going to be like and, and, and everything. So for, I tried to summarize what open source AI and closed source AI really is, right? 
and 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 this is the best way I can do it that everybody can understand. So I draw my AI always with these dot 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 dots, and there's no substance there. They're clear. They're transparent. And he says, "You can look inside of me and see how I think. I am clear." And this AI, who's got this murky blackness swirling, you know, ness in it, right? And it says, you can never look inside of me. You can never know why I say what I say. I am murky. Dude, that's the Facebook AI. Like, why am I being served this ad? What is going on here? Why is this happening? Why is this AI telling me this? I can't understand what's inside of it. It's all black box AI. And I understand that that's a thing right now. But I would argue that as consciousness and, and we get into this new layer of spatial computing and, and intelligence is everywhere, people are going to really want to trust their AIs because they're going to be driving us and teaching us and being part of as collaborators in our society. And so understanding what an AI's true intentions are is going to be paramount, right? So this little guy says, select my AI. So I think that's a big one. And I, I think we'll get there. I think right now we're all doing our best job we can. And you know, Elon Musk said it was going to take 50 years for self-driving cars to actually go on the earth. And uh, yeah, I, I this could take 20, 30 years. I don't know. But this is, you know, I think we have to know that there's best intentions and everybody's working towards this. But I think as a society, this will be the way that we go to. Um, and why? Well, I think it's like this idea of like, do you trust this AI? And it's like, yes. And if you can trust an AI... I think leveraging its intelligence, man, you can get flown to the stars. I really, really feel like that's going to be the way to go. Uh, I think that's just the cooler of the possible futures. I love this picture. Um, so what else do we need <laughs> to, to make this stuff happen? You know, what are the key elements? Well, there's another one. And it's data sovereignty. So I drew this this morning because I knew I want to talk about XR safety because you think about our kids, right? And all like we're just recording. There more of their stuff is going online. Like like my kids do Khan Academy and and all these different online things. And these 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 databases know exactly what my kid knows, right? And they know exactly, you know, my TV habits. You know, fuck you know, Siri and Alexa are listening to me. It's like, okay, it knows my reading habits, my love habits. It knows my porn browser history. It's got my, my money. It knows all my money is what my social media is. And, and really you got to think of, of this information as your digital DNA or these little, you know, micro snapshot clones of who you are, what your consciousness is. Right. And so, you know, uh, here's these servers, and your info is everywhere. So each one of these servers has a different piece of you on it, right? And you can see all these little guys, like this guy's whistling, this guy's dancing, you know, this guy's sleeping in there. That's your data. Nobody's accessed that data, so it's sleeping. And and I started theorizing, and a good way for people to understand it is, is each of these servers is an aquarium. And these little guys swim up to, up to you and they say, you are trapped. And, and they're piranha. And they are hungry for your data. I have money around with, with, with binary, right? And the little guy's like, save me. And they're grabbing your you and ripping your little guy apart and dragging these little bits of data everywhere that you don't even know, like for other piranha to feast on, right? And uh, I don't think that's a sustainable thing. Uh, especially not after watching, uh, you know, Social Dilemma and all, reading all this other stuff. I think over the next 10, 20 years, whatever, I don't know how long it's going to take. It's, 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 I, th I think as a cultural mind shift, this will happen. And, and I, so finally I say, to be safe, we need data sovereignty. And it's kind of put this guy in a diving bell and protected suit. He's got a little trident and you can see he's kind of poked this, 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 this AI fish and, and all the, the bad stuff is dripping out of it and everything. So. So yeah, I think those things are necessary because spatial computing, the best uh, best way I can put it is this idea of spatial enlightenment. When you can visualize our, our you know, using brain computer interfaces, our vibrations with each other, and we're collectively making these AIs and we're able to visualize signals from sound waves to carbon coming out um, to the mycelial network of roots down here to even 
what does quantum mean? It's like this catch-all phrase that's like, what does the double slit actually look like, like in physical reality? You know, um, to, to time, being able to have these temporal timestamps and scrubbing through time in any location, to uh, having connections with people, you know, uh, just being able to easily see like, oh, I'm connected to you, sweet. I was in a room, we're just in a room together. I can see that we are connected. And and then knowing that every space, no matter dimensionally how small or big it is, can be held in your hands. So he's holding like a, a sun here and he's got amoeba around him. Here's atomic symbol and here's Saturn. And dude, what does that mean when education looks like this? I don't know, but it sounds cool. <laughs> so my whole thing is, is, is not doing this in a closed way, doing is this a super reality, a very open way. We don't, uh, we're not trying to build any wall gardens here. We're not trying to own the metaverse. All of our software is open source. You know, everything we're doing is, 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 is trying to build, you know, this, what does this open metaverse look like? And what's the least fucked way we can make this? Like, we don't want to build the scary solution. <laughs> we want to build the, the best optimal solution for humanity. Um, and, and, and including everybody in to go like, oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, why is it a bad idea? Please tell us more because we need to know these things. Um, so I think this is really what this open source metaverse movement is. And I, I hope that, you know, as you guys' ideas and tech mature and we keep going down this road, we start learning that that's a really cool way for humanity to move in. Um, so, cause this is what I want. I would love people to stop being robots. Um, I, I don't think we need robots anymore. <laughs> At Game Gen, we really teach what our students want to learn. It's like, okay, cool. And I think everything should be like that for education. It's like, cool. Uh, you, you know, these people like making AI. You know, th these bushes are hanging in the metaverse. These people like singing and dancing together. And these people love building and venting. It's like, cool, go out and do all those things. Go fly those spaceships, uh, Elon. Do whatever you're going to do. Because I think these AIs can can free us from that bean counting and allow us to pursue our passions. And I think this is what this Web3 creator economy really is going to lead to, is people really being empowered to, to, to go after their, their thing. And, and this is my last slide. This is what I hope for all of us is that, you know, we're going to be able to just kind of hold the earth, tell it it's going to be okay and uh, make it cool for this little guy back here. So um, there you go. Thank you guys. Uh, I pre-record this in case, uh, <laughs> in, in case alt space was giving me trouble. It looks like it, it was, but hopefully if, if we have time for Q and a, uh, please ask some questions. So thank you guys. Yay. We did it. Can you guys hear me? Can you can hear yes, me? Can Sweet. Hear and that was a phenomenal, awesome. phenomenal talk. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Was, I, you yeah, know, was... I did that like an hour ago. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to screw it. I, if all space breaks on me, I want to make sure I get this out of there. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. Thank you guys for, you know, sitting through that. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but thank no, you guys no, for no, sitting no. through that. Nick, you, 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 uh, you, your talk was phenomenal. I think I was getting lots of back channel messages uh, of people just uh, incredibly impressed uh, with with what you're you're sharing with us. And you know, every so often I feel like I meet someone uh, from the future, um, and I definitely feel like you had that perspective. Um, so we'd love to do we'd love to do a Q and A. Uh, we're going to do yeah. our best to actually uh, when when somebody wants to speak, we can use our little emojis and raise their hands. Maybe come close to the stage, and we'll try to. Put you on microphone so everybody can hear your question. But if not, Nick, we'll try to repeat the questions for our YouTube viewers at, uh, at home. Uh, so, awesome. Zakria, I see you here up first. Do you want to uh, let us know what your, your question is? Yeah, man. Uh, that was dope. I don't, I don't have a question. That was it. It was just dope. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, dude. I like you. All right, Zakria, thank you for letting us know that that was, uh, that was quote unquote dope. I would right. bro fist you if I could. What was that? What else? I said I would bro fist him if I could, but uh, there you uh, go. Any, <laughs> any Anyone got any other questions? Uh, sure, surely uh, somebody. 
All right, Pavel, uh, good, to, good to see you. Um, what's your question? Please come up a little closer and I will, here, hold on. I think I can make you amplify. Okay, go ahead, ask your question. Hello, I'm a student designer for ESAR and- uh, you're, you're just a little quiet. Me, can you, can you speak up just a little bit? Very interesting to know your perspective how we can create a community of star designers to share our practice in global uh, level. Thanks. Well, thank you. That's a, a great question that Nick, can you I, I told you. Yeah, so he asked me, he's an XR designer, and, and he asked, like, this is all cool. How do we create a global community for this? And and my simple answer is one day at a time, man. You know, that's this weird thing about exponential tech, right? Like some of the drawings I, I do, like, you know, you guys, if you're in here, you, you probably get it. You're like, oh, wow, that's cool. You know, I get, I see that. But man, 99% of the world, I show this stuff to them, their eyes glaze over, right? So, you know, I think it's about it, it, technology, and, and that's because they just don't see it. Technology is moving so fast, and unless you've really looked at it for a long time, you you don't you don't know um, what, where it's 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 going. That's the weird thing we're in. So, how do you create a global community one day at a time, and finding those people that resonate? You know, finding those people that are like, oh, yeah, 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 I I see this stuff too. Like, let's 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 make something great together, and find those people that are not in it for. You know, money's great and stuff, but man, I mean, really, the mirrorverse and the metaverse is 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 the foundational like reality. Like it's 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 everything going to be here, and so making sure that it's for the betterment of humanity and people that understand that and people that are are in this thing to to really build something right. So look for those people. You know, dig deep in yourself, ask those questions yourself, and. And for me, I mean, I, I use my drawings a lot, to, you know, to, to, to basically resonates with one of them. I'm like, oh, cool. You like that? Well, maybe we should talk more. And that, that, that's fun. And, and I find those people that kind of have those same vibrations as, as me. And I think that's the cool thing that's happening all over the world. I mean, I, I go to house, I go to Twitter. I don't go to Facebook too much anymore, but I still do sometimes. And, and, and you just kind of naturally, these AI systems, even as flawed as they are, are starting to allow emergence to happen. They're starting, YouTube starting to give me the right video to watch. So I understand something. Twitter's putting the right people's, uh, you know, Twitter message in front of me. Uh, and, 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 and these AIs are learning how we think and trying to feed us more of those things and really just paying attention and watch those AIs and look what signals they're giving you and go, oh man, that, that could be cool. Let me talk to that person. And I'll, I'll say this one last thing to, 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 to kind of, you know, summarize it all is um, programmers and engineers and artists, we're all a shy lot, right? Um, we're not going to make this thing together if we stay in our silos and, 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 and are afraid to talk to people. You know, I think what we really need to do is look at the world like a video game and you don't, you're not afraid to click A on anybody in a video game in, in, in Morrowind and see if they're going to talk, right? You're like, oh, what does this person say? And, and I think it's about like finding people connection, not being afraid to, to open up doors and be like, hey, are you guys cool in here? And, and just looking for people to grow healthy community and doing it transparently and open and, you know, I don't know. It'll it, people will come along after that. So that, that's that's my current mentality and uh, trying to do it transparently, open, safely, all those things. So anyway, there you go. Nick, I, I love I love your perspective, Nick. Um, I really, um, you know, this makes me think of uh, Clubhouse. Like to me, Clubhouse is a, is a big part of the metaverse. Um, and I remember, you know, kind of in the pandemic, falling in love with that platform just because it enabled us to have these conversations and, and meet new people. So I think that's an awesome Agreed. Yeah, So I'm agreed. seeing that, Zikria, you do have a, a question for us. So please go ahead and unmute your mic and I will amplify you. Okay, go ahead, Zikria. You have a question? Hey, um, hey I, I, I love your thoughts on everything that you've said so far. One of the things that I kept on thinking about um, 
is you said AI, you know, getting smarter and paying more attention to our likes and our dislikes. And then when you look at the current state of the world and the current, you know, political landscape that we're in with everything that happened, uh, you know, January 6th, for example, right? There's this, this, this <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's this thing happening where I can't remember the exact quote, but there was this great tweet that I saw that said that um, it's putting things in front of people and those things are putting us deeper in a hole. What it was talking about was, um, for example, YouTube's algorithm uh, giving people more conspiracy theories, more, you know, d divisive content that, that pushes people into even, you know, further apart from each other. And then, you know, Twitter doing the same thing. And Facebook recently, with everything that's happened with them, all the backlash with them, that they know what they're doing that they know it's bad and they're purposely doing it anyway because bottom line, it makes more money uh, to give people the content like that. I mean, how do we come back from that? Seeing that we've so deeply kind of gone down the rabbit hole, how do we come back from that? Okay, so again, these are my opinions and, you know, that that that's a thing that, one, we all need to come together to figure that out, right? But here's my, you know, opinions on it, right? I, I, so again, Everybody at these companies, right? They're all dudes and gals just like us, man, trying to do the best they can. And, and they were like, oh, we need a business model. We need to make money. It's like, oh, we need to optimize engagement. And, and you know, that's this weird thing about exponential tech where it's like, oh, shit. This is destroying the very fabric of reality and fracturing all these multidimensional realities and, and polarizing everybody. And, oh, my God. Did we just have, uh, you know, the, 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 the Capitol building get overrun? It's like, this is the weird world we're in where, you know, that, that, that's happening. So you got to take a step back and realize none of those people are like, ha, 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 like Mr. Burns from Simpsons. Like, I fundamentally don't believe anybody is, is, is evil. Uh, you know, now people can, can exploit that stuff. You know, people can exploit those things. But I think, you know, the problem that we're in now that we've recognized it, but then we've got these, these systems that these poor people are trapped in that they can't be like, oh, shit, what do we do? It's like, oh, we got to change our algorithm. Oh, my God, that breaks all of our money revenue and shuts our company down. And we, we've got to go meet with the board and the investors and, and just the red tape that they're entrenched in for them to be agile and move is really hard, right? So they know that shit's going down, right? They know shit's going down, but they're in these legacy systems of like, well, this is how it's always worked. And there's some people that are waking up. There's other robots in there that just don't even see it. You know, it's it's all of us putting our hands on the elephant, right? So, you know, so let's that's what well, the system we're currently in. We're uh, like collectively, we're all waking up to the oh, this is a shit show right now, right? Um, you know, and but it's hard to turn a democratic society it's real hard to turn that that and 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 make those companies like do right and like all this stuff lawyers are going to come out it's real hard to like how do you juggle this ball without dropping the other balls that we want like freedom of speech and and all these things it's such a hard problem and you look at somebody like china which you know Ch china has been uh, amazing for so many years and and it's like this ebb and flow and right now the media's got all these you know, horrible headlines, but China's ultimately good people too. We just got to all figure out how to play nice and their solution, which they can be like, or, th or, 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 or well and agile is they, they're, so our TikTok here, right? Our TikTok, like that my kids look at is filled with posts of like teachers getting slapped by students and wrecking bathrooms and kids see that. And they're like, that's cool. Let's do that. And 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 China real quickly locked that stuff down a couple months ago and was like, oh man, all that crazy stuff's off of TikTok. We're taking control of all these systems. You know, they have how many three billion people to worry about manage, and they're like, oh, we're only going to show educational videos on TikTok and disallow like video games to only be played like three hours a week. It's like, okay, that's you guys' solution whatever, it's your own country, figure it out. You know, they've got the same problems we have too with realities being so fractured, right? With all these narratives from everybody coming out and really, you know, embodying the collective consciousness of reality. And reality is quite a weird place, right? Uh, you know, case in us right here is how do you deal with that, right? And 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 so they're staying that way. That's the, the current situation we're in. And my only solution, 
<laughs> is to draw co comic strips. <laughs> so if you're looking at me for all the answers, oh, no, 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 buddy. It's not me. But what I can do is I can draw some, like, kind of things that some raises up and, and hoping that we, you know, like I said, like open source AIs, everything kind of being out in the open and, 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 and letting people know that their data is getting taken and what that data means and how it works is I think people gradually get on there and, and, and hopefully we don't implode in the meantime and, and we can get to, you know, this, this next, you know, web 4.0, like I want to get to web 4.0. That's the fun web. So anyway, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, so th that's my perspective. It's all a mess. We all know it's best. How do we get out of the mess? We don't do that together and in rooms like this on clubhouse on our discord and discords everywhere people talking and trying to come up with the least fucked solution so there you go we gotta work together that was uh that was a phenomenal answer to a very very complex uh issue uh thank you nick well i want to i want to be respectful to nick's time and everybody else's we're running a little over uh do we have one final final question uh for nick before yeah, i can take one more question i gotta pee <laughs> all right well it looks like you might get a breakaway even sooner then. well hey i just want to i want to thank you again nick for for showing up and giving that wonderful talk i, I really that was incredibly engaging and i just want to say everyone thank you for coming out to day two of xrsi safety week we have one more event today it is a, a, a workshop on um, metaverse iq um, a really engaging workshop hosted by shay uh, Shay Richberg and uh, her husband. That's happening at 345 Pacific Standard Time. Um, you can find more info on the website, xrsafetyweek.org uh, slash agenda. I really encourage everyone to uh, join that, that interactive workshop. It's going to be a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, but otherwise, we will be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. here in Old Space and uh, really, truly look forward to uh, uh, seeing you all then. All right. So